thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Just want to let everyone know that we're recording this webinar for folks that couldn't make it. Um, my name is Chris Hill. I'm with the product marketing team here at Tactile, and I'm joined with John Tomazuka, our CTO and founder. And uh, we have an interesting morning and an interesting discussion planned here for you guys today, talking about some of our latest innovation. Um, so thanks again for joining us. And uh, John, I'll, I'll hand it over to you. Great. Thank you, Chris. Um, uh, before I start, obviously, the, the focus is um, touch alignment, um, which is a, a feature of our 2.7 release, um, which is uh, available uh, as we speak. Um, I did want to say that, you know, this is uh, a group effort. Um, it's really not my work. Uh, you know, we obviously in coming up with these solutions, uh, I am involved in them, but it's really the work of Jason Brestel, uh, Peter Nolan on the development team, uh, Maureen Miller and uh, Brian Ripkowski on the product and design team, and um, Kelly Malone and Corey Kozlowski, who actually took this out to different clients to test in the field to make sure that uh, it worked up to a certain standard. So I do want to call those uh, teams and people out um, as they were sort of integral in making this happen. Um, with that, I'm going to share my screen. So uh, touch alignment, um, this has uh, been a long going thing. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit longer of a story than just getting into it because ultimately the, the solution itself is fairly simple. Um, so um, that's an important thing, but uh, we wanted to give you some perspective. Um, first of all, in, in terms of tactile and how we think of ourselves and what we are trying to do, we're really trying to solve problems for people like Kareem. So I want to show you a quick clip. Uh, Kareem works at Fastenal. This is a, a short bit of um, a video that you may or may not have seen that we did with Fastenal. Um, I'll just let this run. It didn't mess with my hearing, my vision or nothing. I felt very comfortable, 100%. Because it like, if I don't get it right, okay, maybe I'm, maybe I'm doing it wrong. Yeah. Let me click over here. Let me watch this video for a minute. It's gonna give me about 10, 15 seconds. Okay. And the cool thing is I can go back to it. And I can go back to it again. These these machines can kill you, can hurt you, man you. So I want you to do it right. Here's here it is. I'm giving you a device that you're gonna be super awesome in it. I'm gonna hand you a device. You're gonna to wanna to come to work every single day. So I First of all, I love Kareem. It's, it's just the uh, awesome stuff. Um, but um, he's really the type of user we think about when we design uh, features. We, we're not really sitting there thinking about you know, 3D artists or whatever, that we're really thinking about this, this type of user, the environment that he works in, the realities of that environment. So not, not just the fact that it's a shop floor and it's loud and um, dirty and what have you, um, there's also an IT environment and sort of a certain level of preparedness as an enterprise that um, we look at in terms of a whole picture, like uh, is what we're building appropriate for this type of, of client? So that's just a little context as we go through this. Um, it just uh, quickly, uh, a lot of this is uh, about how we sort of wean ourselves off the idea of markers. Um, there's certainly a, a reason why they exist. This is a, just a short kind of timeline that I pulled together. I'm not sure how accurate it is, but um, uh, essentially the, the, the first uses of this, at least in an augmented reality uh, scenario were um, in the 1990s, um, there was a tag called a cyber code. I, I believe it was developed specifically for uh, Sony and the PlayStation. You may remember um, these things called Wonder Books. They had a, 
a marker. I'll show you just a little picture of that in the next slide. But um, it would uh, paint covers and pages and content over um, books that were printed with these tags. Um, QR codes were actually developed by another Japanese company called Densa Wave that was in uh, 94. Um, AR toolkit uh, came after that. That was uh, uh, an open source uh, sort of widely used in uh, mobile devices, things like that. That was later acquired by Daiquiri um, for you AR history buffs, uh, which I believe was then later acquired by Snap. I'm not sure what who really kind of owns AR toolkit anymore. Um, and then there's several others. They're very similar AR tag, April tag, uh, Qualcomm released uh, Vuforian 2011. Um, and then out of Spain, there was, uh, I'm not sure if it's pronounced Aruco or not, but um, all these markers do a fairly good job of um, giving camera position, uh, allowing uh, OpenCV and that type of technology to understand the three-dimensional position of something in the real world and then apply uh, virtual content to those tags. And those things, uh, you've probably all seen different um, solutions that uh, have one or the other uh, sort of function. So you'll see here, there's the Pictures picture only of appear this. On the television. Book of Spells is sold separately this, from the PS3 system, anyway, PlayStation Eye camera, and there's robotics, there's some um, people trying to create uh, different um, video game and sort of body tracking that's been replaced by sort of ping pong ball, etc. Anyway, do you get a sense for what that's about? So um, when we were originally creating Manifest, we decided to go with the uh, QR code as, as sort of a reference tag, which um, those of you who um, use Manifest or are familiar with it, you're certainly familiar with the, the QR code. Um, some of the, the reasons we chose that and some of just the, the positive points of it is uh, it's very much universally accepted and available. Um, no weird license, licensing schemes. Um, we ran into a lot of uh, problems sort of going into different possible markers in the beginning and ran into problems with licensing, et cetera. Um, and you also get the, the embedded data. So not just the, the positional data, but you get like a serial number or something else like that. Um, on the con side, it, it, it wasn't actually designed for, for AR content. It uh, can have accuracy problems. I mean, it's not, uh, a, a super huge problem, but we've seen um, different issues come up with, with that. Um, but sort of the critical one that we see is a lot of our customers just can't use them, not because they're not capable, but like um, some clients don't want these codes on their airplanes or their tanks or you know whatever. So there, there many customers have, have some restrictions in terms of um, actually deploying this type of technology or, you know, mark giving extra markings to their equipment or, or vehicles. Um, so what, how does this work today? And for the, I'll go over this. I'm sure those of you who are um, well-versed in our, in our product, this is uh, just uh, boring stuff for you, but essentially what happens is that we'll create an asset class that's uh, a representative object for all equipment of a certain type, make, model. We add documents, models, uh, templates are associated with that asset class. Um, so that's the, the main kind of container. And then uh, after that, we create locations and then create assets, which are unique instances of the asset class. So. When it comes time to set up a QR code, there in the system, there is a way where you say, okay, this is the position that I'm expecting the QR code it's going to be in. So you can either do this on a 3D model on the web or in um, HoloLens or 3D headset. You can set that up there. Um, 
or you can do it um, on on the real equipment. So print out the tag and start your your authoring from that step. Um, though to be sort of transparent, the, we always had a problem with okay, what do we do with the other hundred or thousand pieces of equipment that we may have that we'll now need to code up and and you know tag with this uh, this physical tag. Um, Typically, that's been done in sort of a the, the first thing is just to kind of assess what's a unique position that makes sense and that's easily identifiable um, is, is kind of one step. And the other is to really get into sort of, OK, you know, this distance from the floor, from one side, from the top and give sort of very specific placement. But um, we kind of generally agree that that's a, a flawed um, that's a flawed plan, so to speak. Um, so why do we care as as tactile? So the, it can't be overstated the importance of spatial data for us. Um, we have a lot of customers that they, they're not so interested in in like the spatial data, like having arrows in a specific place or leader lines pointing to an exact uh, location. But the, the the thing is, is that we really kind of see this as a as an evolution of uh, quite similar to like maps from going from maps to GPS. So the the question is how much guidance and how much thought is necessary to translate from a manual to someone actually doing it. So we care about how seamless that is to understand what it is to do. And in that sense, the spatial placement uh, is, we think a barrier to adoption. Um, it adds friction to the use of the product. So if it, you know, everything that you want to do requires a, a code being placed, et cetera, um, those are things that we are constantly working on. Um, this is one that we've been looking at for years, uh, different kinds of solutions, um, different ways of, of treating this, this particular problem. Um, and so when we went to, to, to look at these and, you know, we look at this as, and I'm kind of referring back to that first video with Kareem, our criteria uh, for a different solution are really sort of involves these things. One is that it first and foremost has to be simple. Um, it should have minimal setup or external processes. And what that means is, you know, how much extra equipment or software or uh, machine learning models need to be created in order for this thing to work. And so we, we look at that and, and sort of evaluate. Ideally, it's simple and requires no extra sort of uh, process. So that that's important. Um, it obviously has to be applicable across asset classes. It should be a technique that works um, for many different things. Um, that's kind of obvious. Uh, ac accuracy really should be better or as good as a, a QR code. So th that's very important, obviously. And as we are a cross-platform solution, we really want to uh, create something that at least has the capability to be implemented on multiple devices. That doesn't mean that we have it all implemented on every single uh, device class today, um, but uh, at least we have that possibility in, in the future. Um, just as kind of a, a background, so you know that we we kind of did our homework. We we did look at all sorts of different um, solutions here in terms of uh, options, other options besides um, the QR code, et cetera, different types of alignment tools. This um, one with a bunch of circles is used by guides. It's kind of a maybe a more accurate version of a, a QR code, gives the, a better positional um, data, there's poster alignment. Um, problem there was that it, it's hard to kind of give unique encoding. So poster alignment can help you 
get general alignment, but then when you try and get to, okay, what specific thing am I looking at? It's not very good at that. Um, there's a possibility of mapping the entire area, um, sort of solutions like Matterport, which you can get very accurate um, uh, tracking and things like that with that type of solution. Um, but again, that setup uh, criteria kind of fails here. Um, the, the, these next two object recognition and uh, a dynamic 3D bounding box were kind of related. There's a photo, this is actually from the media pipe library. Um, this is a, a Google project. <clears throat> this was very interesting and we spent a lot of time researching this. Uh, our problem kind of became one that it wasn't very stable, didn't give us uh, the accuracy we needed. And the other is that this um, the sort of data that feeds this model is all sort of everyday objects. So you can get it to work on shoes and chairs and um, other things like that. So it can create the, the 3D bounding box necessary to, to kind of do the tracking. But when it comes to training it on customer specific models, um, that wasn't exactly clear. And so we're also looking at that as another uh, blocker in terms of, okay, we can put this in, but now we have to train a model to understand equipment, et cetera. That was a, a kind of a blocker in that way. Um, there is also model tracking, which um, in our estimation sort of worked very well, um, but requires that you have a 3D model. And the majority of our customers don't necessarily have 3D models. So it was something that was like, it would solve in some cases, but uh, not necessarily in, in all cases. Um, so I gave you guys this big, long buildup uh, for this simple diagram. Essentially, this is uh, touch alignment in a nutshell. Um, this is part of the, the onboarding, which you'll see. I have a video of how, how you set it up. But it's really just this pointing to three different uh, locations on the piece of equipment or a room or whatever it is, and us getting uh, 3D uh, positional data from that. So we use hand tracking on the device, and the user sets up three reference points. That is basically all it is. Um, so the idea here, just in a little more detail, is that um, obviously today we use a QR code. It uses those kind of larger um, boxes as a 3D reference. So that gives us the, the camera position, et cetera, that we can use to, to figure out angles and where all the 3D content is related. Um, and so with touch alignment, we're really just kind of pulling that apart and letting the user create the, the three different uh, reference points on the actual equipment. Um, no QR code is necessary. Um, we'll get back to this later, but we're also, we're not getting specific data either. We don't, we don't get serial number or asset tag or any of that stuff uh, with touch alignment. Um, so now I'm gonna show you, uh, those of you who may have seen other webinars I've done, it's always my, uh, my Ford C-Max 2013. So I'm gonna continue that. Uh, sort of track and show you how this setup works. So this video is gonna show the setup uh, of touch alignment and I'll pause at different points and kind of talk through uh, a couple of important things. There are in the setup, the headset takes photos and those are points where the, the video capture drops out. So uh, just bear with me on that. So here I've got my um, asset open. I have a new button here that says set up and has kind of this three point thing. I get some uh, data about what we're trying to do here. I, there's some additional tips on, on setting up touch alignment. Uh, but essentially when I start, I get this panel. And so I'm just gonna pause here. This panel is movable. You can put it wherever you want or pin it in space. All you have to do is sort of tap and drag it into the position you want. You'll notice here that as I lift my hand, this number and this little sort of white um, border start giving me a clock. 
I think it takes two or three seconds to if, of your hand being stable, your index finger being stable to record a location. So it gives you an indicator of uh, where your index finger is and, and how long it's been stationary. So all I do, all I have to do at this point is find the, let me back a little bit. So now I'm just going to register um, my first point, which is going to be a Ford logo on the passenger door, which when I register that and hold my finger in place, the system registers a, a photo. And so I'm just going to do that three times. So I've got my three things, one on the rear view mirror and one on the door handle. and then. This is uh, kind of important, the system. So once I have my three points, um, holographically, it shows me where those points are and gives me kind of this trace route of, of where they are. And then it asks me to place the asset tag. This might seem um, counterintuitive, but uh, the system still uses and has to be interoperable with uh, QR codes uh, for the moment because our customers have implemented them already. and. Um, question I'm sure will be asked later is, um, you know, what about iPad? The iPad doesn't have this capability yet. So if you're using both, you still have to have QR codes. So we, we have to have both um, active in the system as an option. So if you already use um, a QR code, you'll want to scan a tag in the location it's in. That will uh, make sure that all of your um, all of your content, your templates, all the alignment will be maintained. If not, you can just place the tag virtually, which is uh, what I'm going to do in this case. And this probably looks very familiar to those of you who use Manifest. You can just drag the tag wherever you want. Now, if you're if all you're using is um, touch alignment, this is really just becomes a menu for your asset. So you want to place it in some area that, that makes some sense or you think generally it makes sense to users. Um, and then the final step is that you're going to take a reference photo. So you kind of back up and then get all the points together. And then you take that photo that then gets uh, saved as a reference for the, the operator who's going to come in and do this alignment uh, later. So this kind of gives them extra help so that they see Overall, okay, here's where the, the three points are. And then it gives the individual photos with more detail on each one of those. So let's uh, clear our heads for a second, um, tear everything down. This is the process for an operator. Um, and hopefully you'll see that it's uh, fairly simple. And I messed up. Hold on. So this is, uh, again, the operator. He has the ability to align, uh, do touch alignment if it's been set up. Uh, otherwise, he can use the, he can default back to QR code. System gives him a, a reference, just goes to alignment point one, then shows the next point. Again, that window kind of follows the user around. Second point, and then it shows the third point. gives them a sign that the alignment's been uh, successful and you can see that that QR code is pretty much dead on where it was dropped in the first place. Um, and that is how you do touch alignment. Um, a couple of uh, best practices and things to look out for. Um, obviously, you're taking up three different reference photos. If you are taking a photo of something like, let's say it's a, a black square box and you put points on a, a corner or in the middle where it's not easily determined where you are, 
it's not going to be helpful for the user as a as a an author or someone setting this up. You really have to think about the next person who's going to come and, and try and do this to to make sure that it's those reference points are easy to find uh, and sort of hopefully unique points. Um, but this isn't very different than sort of we talked about the QR code. A lot of people try and put it in a place that kind of is unique and recognizable. Um, it, ideally, it's something stationary, although I put one of my points on a door. If it's something that's like, you know, you put it on the hood and the hood is always up in 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 the area that it is or, you know, something that's moving, obviously that's not a great reference point for you to, to call out as it may move. Um, lighting, it, this is uh, something to look out for, at least uh, those of you who are HoloLens users, the lighting and uh, IR cameras that it has, it, it, that it uses to do hand tracking can cause some problems. So if there's like a bright sort of side lighting, you may see sort of jitters along with the hand tracking. So that might um, get in the way. We have we've got some initial feedback that um, big difference in height with the person who authored this or did the setup of touch alignment and the person who's doing the actual touch alignment can cause problems. So um, it's just something to think about. We're still looking into um, a potential solution to, to alleviate that, that issue. Um, Anecdotally, I'm not sure if there's real science behind this, but we've seen that the, the distance that you put these three points apart, um, sort of the, the longer that is, the better the kind of repeated accuracy of the placement. It makes some sense, um, but if you're, you know, putting three points right in front of you uh, flat, you might expect that there will be some uh, uh, some problems in terms of accuracy. And then the, the planes that they're put on. So again, the this is kind of where QR code gets into problems. It's on a single plane with three different points. If you can, and there's like different um, sort of planes on the object, like one is uh, further out and one's closer to you, those are also helpful in ultimately uh, helping with the accuracy. Um, so that's some best practices with um, touch alignment. There's another piece of this that uh, is kind of, uh, it's in a different area, but we we designed it to work with touch alignment because we no longer have that um, the capability within the code to uniquely identify the asset by doing sort of a visual scan. Um, we added text scanning to the keyboard um, so that you could look at a serial number or uh, an asset, pre-existing asset tag, or you know any kind of text that identifies that, that object um, and get to it through, through normal sort of manifest search. So I'll show you what that looks like. Um, first of all, uh, I think this was an update we did a, a while ago, just in sort of preparation, but it used to be that in our search, you'd really only we'd really only use the asset tag ID. Uh, we made sure and index the serial number and internal ID. These are both things for the, the users that they can use, whether that's their own um, asset ID or if that's a serial number of the, the object. In this case, I, I use my uh, license plate number. Please don't look up my record. Uh, but anyway, I entered that serial number so that then uh, in my um, text capture that um, my unique asset will come up. So this is just a, again, this is something that uses the camera quite a bit. So it's a very kind of uh, chopped up video. Um, so here I go to normal search. You'll notice in the upper left, there's a little like T with a, some box around it. This is the text scanner. It will ask you to uh, take a photo or use your voice to uh, capture a photo. And then when that comes back, it essentially looks at the photo you, you've taken and then parses out the, the text into different sort of um, groups so that you can select them and fill in the blanks, so to speak. So use that as your keyboard in this case on the very 
left hand side it captured my uh, license plate number and also captured something like carmax.com or something that's that's on my license plate. If it doesn't capture well, you can restart it or you can view the actual photo that it used to capture it to just get some more data about you know everything it's capturing because it will whatever's in its field of view it will try and break down into text. Um, and so ultimately that goes into search and then that will bring up your your asset and then from there you can do touch alignment. So um, that sort of uniquely identifying the asset uh, has a, a couple more steps in with with uh, touch alignment. So um, that's pretty much it. Uh, that uh, sort of concludes what we're doing with um, touch alignment. Uh, we did do some updates just so you know, so that it's also supported offline. So you can take uh, templates offline or jobs offline, and it will take those reference photos and everything else that you need to use touch alignment. That was one of the point releases. Um, so that will also work. Um, and I'll open things up to questions in just a sec. I just did want to uh, promote the next webinar we're going to have, which uh, you're not going to hear from me. You're going to hear from um, Maureen Miller, who's our director of product. She's going to talk a lot about um, iPad job redesign, which is a big deal. Um, there's going to be a, a lot of good stuff to talk about there. So that's just a teaser that should be coming in May. Um, and that's it. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I'll open it up to, to questions at this point. Yeah, I, I, I love this feature. It's uh, I think it's a great example of a design principle and tactile, just powerful but simple. You know, easy to use for guys like Kareem. Yeah, it took us a long time to get it uh, to where it's at. It, the first version of it didn't take that long, but getting the UI right really um, took a lot of time. So if you, if you have questions, you know, please please put them in the Q and A section. Um, I'll just I'll just kick it off, John, with a with just a basic question that's come in. Is just like, is this available? How do I get it? How do I use it? Um, so, I mean, we we showed some of the setup uh, of of how you use it. Uh, essentially, if you're an author in the system, all you have to do is go in and do those that recording of the three points, um, and then that it, it's really simple. It takes uh, like two minutes to set up. Um, that I can see some of these questions here. Um, Looks like there's a question about the accuracy of the system. Uh, again, this is anecdotal. We did a lot of testing on this, but we um, did sort of very much test out uh, how accurate it is. Very good. Um, we've seen different sort of variations of that, but in our estimation, it, it works better than a QR code um, in most cases for um, accuracy and, and tracking. Um, I see one that says, what is the biggest asset to use this on? I don't think it's really about um, the size so much. It, 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 it can be really any, any size. If it's something that's enormous that like takes up a room and then we run into sort of the kind of physical limitations of the tracking on like HoloLens or Magic Leap, which can be, you know, 20 feet, 30 feet. If it's something like that, we do have another uh, feature in the system called alignment tag that helps you uh, keep the work instructions aligned more accurately. Uh, and it's something that's more like a localized tag um, to make sure that, that, that things line up. Uh, let's see. Well, I guess I should click this answer live. So, um, is it able to be plugged in outside of your environment? Um, not right now. It's it's exclusive to to manifest in what we're doing. Um, it's not a bad idea. Uh, it's something we'll um, take into consideration. But uh, right now, it is um, it's only within uh, manifest. 
Um, let's see. So, Bob, semi truck, you're you're, you're <laughs> insisting. I think uh, it would work fine. We we um, the testing that um, Kelly and Corey did internally uh, was with the army on very large uh, tanks and other vehicles. So a uh, semi truck would be uh, a fine use case for this. Um, so can I use touch alignment in one location and printed tags in another? Absolutely. I think um, that is the reason why in the video you still see that virtual yellow tag as if there were a tag. It's trying to bridge those two environments where, okay, I'm doing touch alignment, let's say in, uh, you know, in the shop, but I have a QR code in the training center. That's completely fine. Solution will work, uh, no problem. Um, so there's a question. I see you're mostly using uh, the awesome HoloLens 2 device, but what other devices do you have in timeline? Okay, so that's about the the cross device um, capability. Correct. Right now, this is just on HoloLens 2. Um, we will be releasing this on uh, Magic Leap 2. And we're also looking at a couple other device form factors. That's probably a different webinar, but other things that we're looking to support this with. Again, anything that can do uh, relatively accurate hand tracking, this solution to work for. It's just a question of which ones we're, we're going to port to. Um, our biggest kind of push in the short term is figuring out how we do this with our iOS platform, which it may be another solution, but will definitely inter be interoperable and work with with um, the other solutions. It's a good question. Um, let's see. So, if you were to, so there's a fairly technical. If I was to run a simulation once and place an asset in position X for subsequent places, would it? deviate by any so uh essentially the the nice thing about this is that the the three points and as you add additional distance kind of makes up for those um the the deviations and there's algorithms and work done on our part so we look at that those three points adjust uh we as i said before we have to do a little bit more adjustment for sort of the person's height um I think this is related to the next question, which is about optimal triangle size. Um, I, to me, what, what in my testing with this, I've seen like I think of a foot is kind of the smallest I'd go between the, the different points. That gives you kind of the optimal um, alignment. And again, if it can be on different planes, so like you know something that juts out a little bit. Um, that will give you better results in the long term. Uh, let's see. What limitations exist at the appearance of the, uh, yeah. I mean, it, there's, that's certainly a limitation. So uh, I, I get, let me read this. Um, the question is, if the asset is the same, but there are some uh, changes like the paint uh, or there are additional kind of add-ons to different types of equipment, um, are there, there are limitations there? Uh, I would say yes. I mean, if if the asset has multiple configurations and, and parts that that change, it's a question in my mind whether that is the same asset class or not, but um, that's kind of a different subject. The other is that you just have to make sure, again, from Kareem, his point of view, can he identify those things? It doesn't matter necessarily the paint scheme. Is the is the thing you're pointing at unique enough that it, that any user could kind of say, "Oh, well, that's the that's the pressure gauge." It doesn't really matter if it's red, white, or blue, right? Um. So Irfan says, "I'm new to this. Can I use the software to author in an on-prem situation? Is it able to be authored offline?" Uh, Chris, you want to take that one or you want me to do that? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, the software works on-prem. You can deploy it 
in your own cloud on your own premise. Uh, it also works offline. So yes to both those questions. Great. Yeah, the, the, there is an option for a manifest that is containerized. So you can run that on your laptop or on your uh, your own hosting environment or on a you know sort of tiny device it's it is portable in that way um i guess i'd answer also you can do that which is kind of offline but then you can additionally have it running on device sort of super offline so it wouldn't even need the the on-prem server um is it compatible with any hand tracking solution? Um, I, I guess with this, I would just say no. It, it whatever software that we support, whatever whatever device, we will be building this in with the either a native or sort of a the best SDK we can find for that particular device. We will make that work. So again, it's not really a I guess from that question, it seems to me like you're looking at, at this like a like an SDK, but it's it's part of the business application, which is is manifest. Um, how accurate is touch alignment with safety gloves? Uh, it the the this is more of a function of device, so it works perfectly well with safety gloves. That it does uh, the hand tracking works uh, fine if you are. Um, if you have gloves, of course, there probably are, you know, certain types of gloves that are enormous that might be better or worse, but um, uh, generally speaking, it will work. Uh, that's my name. iOS. Okay, so iOS, again, as many of you know, we have a manifest for the iPad. It will be the subject of our, um, our next webinar, but we're pretty much in heavy R&D on the best way to resolve this on iOS that will be interoperable with everything else that we do. So um, stay tuned for, for some developments in that area. Uh, what sensors of the HoloLens do you need? Would it work with just a camera? Uh, my understanding of the HoloLens is that it uses the, the IR cameras to do hand tracking. And so those are, those are the sensors that are, are necessary uh, for, for this to work. Is it possible for you to quantify how much better it is than a QR code? Uh, no, <laughs> I, I, I mean, again, it's the the um, testing that we've done is pretty much based on our application. So we'll look, we'll put um, very specific, precise leader lines at at precise locations on the engine or or on you know different identifiable dots on the the um on the car or on the you know equipment um and th those tests are it's not sort of done with the, uh, a whole lot of scientific uh, work it's more like our customers their environments is it tracking is it is it accurate and generally speaking it's much better than qr code but i couldn't sort of scientifically give you a a response to that. Um, does my HoloLens have to be connected or streamed from a service to experience this feature? I'm not sure I understand that question, Andrew. I think um, the manifest application, which is in the uh, the you know relative store, so in Microsoft Store, that you would download it, install it on the headset, and then that's all that's necessary to to experience the feature um you can also sign up for a one one month trial for free if you're interested in that that will set up the whole uh back end necessary to to do it and um there's a whole lot of online uh stuff that's available that that can show you how to do that also i um if Andrea Marks is on this call. Maybe you could just paste in the chat the link to the the community article that was written about this. Um, that might also be helpful. Thank you. Uh, let's see. So, does touch alignment delete the alignment tag? Uh, no. So, 
it you can i'm trying to make this clear the the qr code the one that you print out and stick somewhere is now an optional thing it can run with it or run without it it runs with some things can have it and some things cannot have it and it will work. Um, it doesn't delete the, the virtual tag. So if you remember on that video, we, we went through and showed the three points and then it asked me, where do you want to place this virtual tag? So that's the, hopefully that answers that question. Um, Bob, thank you. You've used it. You like it better than the QR code. That's great. I appreciate that. Uh, MS, the Hollands allows the technician to use safety glasses while wearing the H, the HL. Magically, does not allow this as far as I know. Do you have other devices you're looking into that allow for safety glasses to be worn? Where, yes, we are looking into other devices. Um, I will hold more on that. Um, we're still uh, testing a whole slew of, of new devices. Uh, that we're trying to evaluate exactly for this type of thing. Is it usable in um, our uh, target market, our customer's environment? Um, can it be used with safety glasses and hard hats and all the sorts of uh, additional equipment that they use? So uh, more on that one later. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna circle back to the first question too, John, and just let everyone know that this software is available if you have manifest 2.7, you can set up and use touch alignment. Thank you all so much for the great questions and your time in listening to this um, uh, webinar. And thank you, Chris and team, for, for setting it up. Thanks, everyone.